Hey everyone, found another Alpha Zero simulation match played between Lila Chess Zero and Stockfish on chess.com. I thought it was rather interesting. Uh, in this game, Lila was playing with the white pieces and Stockfish had black. And it, again, it was 10 minutes on the clock each with a five second increment. Uh, the following moves were all booked. So it was d4, d5, c4, knight, c6. Sort of like a queen's um, gambit, I think, or queen's Indian. Knight to f3, bishop g4, takes on d5. Bishop takes f3, pawn takes, and queen takes d5, followed by e3 and e5. And after knight c3 hitting the queen, bishop b4 pins the knight, uh, bishop d2, takes takes, and queen to d6. And this was the end of the book moves. So after this, uh, both engines are playing the game. And I guess Leela's first move was to play rook to b1, hitting the b7 pawn. And so Stockfish played b6 to defend it. And then Leela thought she'd grab another open file with rook to g1, attacking the g7 pawn. And again, Stockfish has played g6, uh, protecting their pawn. However, now this is very nice for white. Notice that white's got the two bishops here and black's got the two knights. Uh, making these two pawn moves from Stockfish actually really opens up the position for the bishops. Um, so if White here manages to open up against the Black's King. Um, they've got to be very careful. For instance, moves like um, Bishop h3 or Bishop to a6 here look rather deadly for White. Saying that though, Leela actually found a very nice move here. She played uh, f4. The point is now two pawns are hitting at e5, so Black's got to make a decision. In the game now, Stockfish played e takes f4. And I think many of us will just recapture it with the e-pawn, which would leave white with doubled pawns. But Leela is an amazing engine, and she played e4 instead, which makes a lot more sense, because now white's threatening to play e5, and the bishop will win the pawn on the next move. Stockfish castled queenside. Leela played the move e5, hitting the queen, which dropped in to e6. And now Leela asks a question to Stockfish, please let me swap queens uh, because I've got a much better position than you. So Stockfish kindly said no thank you, played f5, hits the queen, and they can't on pass on here because the pawn is pinned by the queen against white's king. So the queen's attacked, queen e2 is now played by Leela, and here actually is an amazing move, which equalises according to my uh, analysis, where I use Stockfish 10. Uh, Stockfish now played this move, Rook takes d4, uh, an insane looking move, and you have to ask the question what the hell is going on. Uh, Leela kindly accepted though, so she made it simple, took the Rook straight away. Knight takes, attacking the Queen, and now Queen a6 from Leela, and King to b8. So if we just take a breath for a second and have a look at this position. Um, so Stockfish has just sacrificed a whole Rook. But actually, Black's got quite a decent position. At the moment, Black's got four pawns for the rook, and the white king is very exposed. Well, straight away, you notice there's moves like knight to f3 here, or just queen takes e5. Um, so it's very difficult to know what to do. The first move I looked at was a bishop takes f4 here, and I thought after knight to f3, okay, king to d1. And what's actually black got here? Black could maybe take the rook here, but then they run into problems with bishop to g2, threatening mates on b7. Again, we talked about this previously, where black's moved all their pawns to make it easy for the bishops, and there's no real way to stop this for black. Uh, but after king to d1, black's got this uh, nice sequence with queen d5, king c2, and then they can just play knight to e7. And if white defends their rook with, say, rook to g3 here, black has moves like queen to e4 check, queen to d3 to block, and then comes knight d4 check, king c3, and knight to d5 check. And white's probably got a draw here. It's probably going to be perpetual after king c4. Uh, but black now has this move, knight e3 check. And now this forces white to just play king c3, and knight to d5 is a complete draw. Because if white now takes this knight off on e3, let's say bishop takes, then black plays queen c6. If the king takes the knight, then rook to d8 is checkmate. So after queen c6, king to b4, queen c5 check, 
king to a4, queen a5 is checkmate. That's a very long sequence, but the engines would be able to spot it. I doubt a human player would. If you were white though in this position, facing black in a blitz game, uh, I don't really, I don't think I'd favour my chances very much. It looks very exposed and too open. But in the game, Leela played bishop c3, hits a knight on d4, and Stockfish played the logical move, queen takes e5 with check. King went to d1, and Stockfish develops their piece, knight to f6, which makes a lot of sense. And Leela now plays a very crafty move. Uh, she tries to defend very well. She plays queen b5. The point is, it offers a trade of queens. The knight is attacking the queen. However, the knight is pinned by this bishop on c3. So Stockfish manoeuvred and played queen to e4 to keep the queens on the board, which makes a lot of sense. Leela offers the exchange again with queen to d3. And now rook to d8 was played by Stockfish. And now we get into a very interesting endgame, which is what I put on the thumbnail of this video. Because after queen takes e4 was played, there was knight takes e4, bishop takes, rook takes, king c1, and knight takes f2. All of a sudden, black's got five pawns for the rook, and it's actually a very interesting endgame. So, Leela played rook g2, hits the knight, which jumps in to g4, and rook to d2 is played. And I think this is kind of a trick because I think maybe black should probably keep the rook on. It's a bit tricky though because I guess maybe white's got back rank ideas here with the rook coming down and the bishop here. So maybe it forces Stockfish to trade and I don't really think black wants this. Because after takes, takes, okay, black now wins another pawn with knight takes h2. In this position they've got six pawns for the rook. Um, but it's probably maybe too easy for white to hoover these pawns up. Bishop h6 is a very logical move, threatens rook e1 ideas, followed by rook e8 checkmate. So c5 is played by Stockfish. But now after rook h1, knight to f3 and king c3. White's pieces are very well coordinated here. Knight g5 protects h7. But now white's got their king in a very centralised position, is what you want in an endgame. And after a few more moves, king c7, king to d5. White's got the king right in the centre. And basically now just needs to get the rook into the game. Maybe rook e1 to rook e7. And these pawns should slowly but surely uh, collapse. At the moment it looks a bit like a horde game where one side has loads of pawns and the other is trying to defend. So king d7 was played, keeping the opposition. Rook e1 though, like we said, gets the open file. And I looked at f3 here, I thought black may be able to play this, but I forgot the bishop's still there, so bishop b5 check, king d8, and white has these moves, rook e8 check, king c7, rook e7, and just wins the pawn. And after a move like f2, the bishop still protects the f1 square, and white has moves like rook d7, and if, like me, you're foolish and play a move like king e8, then rook takes h7, with a discovered check, wins another pawn. So it's very easy to see how black's pawns could fall. In the game, knight to e4 was played by Stockfish. Leela threw in a check, bishop b5. The king went to c7. King e5 attacks f4. So Stockfish pushes it up. Uh, and rook f1 is played, attacking the f3 pawn. Now if f2 here, uh, white just wins with bishop to d3 because black can't protect everything. So knight g5 was played to protect uh, the f3 pawn. A4 was played, King B7, Bishop C4, and I think White's got ideas here of Bishop to D5, followed by takes. So King C7 moves the King off that diagonal, Bishop D5 anyway, King D7 and Bishop takes F3, wins the pawn. Now uh, Black's only got five pawns to the Rook, still on paper that sounds equal, but in practice it probably isn't. Uh, Knight T6 is played. Bishop to d5 attacks the knight. The knight went back to g5 and just a5 from Leela. Point being, if black takes his pawn, then maybe black loses all the pawns with rook a1. Uh, and white can just hoover up these weak uh, pawns on that side of the board. So b5 was played, keeps the pawns connected. Rook b1 was played, b4. Rook to d1, threatening a discovered check. However, it's very hard for black to deal with this now because... Let's say they play king c7. Uh, rook c1 just wins the pawn because knight e4 is the only way to protect this c5 pawn. 
And after takes, takes, and rook takes c5, white's just in a one position. So we have to say here that maybe white's already won. In the game, f4 was played by stockfish. Bishop c4, discovered attack, we check. King e7, and white just takes on f4. h6 to protect the knights, uh, but now just comes a6. Knight to e6, check. Um, white could have opted for takes here and takes and king e4. It's perfectly fine for white. However, Lilo just decided to play king e5, attack the knight again. Knight d4 was played, rook f1. And you have to say here, white's in the driving seat. White's threatening to play rook to f7, so stockfish blocks, knight to f5. But there's no way to counter white's next move. Just bishop to e6. So the knight has to move or rook f7 will be played. And this is pretty much where stockfish gave up, though. Uh, they just played b3. To be fair, white could take the knight on f5, but Lila just decided to take a pawn. Bishop takes, c4 is played. Bishop takes c4, explosive, wins another pawn. Knight d6, bishop e6, h5. Rook d1 attacks the knight, f7 check. Bishop takes f7, king takes, and yeah, Lila just plays rook d7 check. The king is forced to the 8th rank. Lila hoovers another pawn up, h4. Rook b7, h3, and after two more moves, white gets a queen uh, and delivers a lawnmower mate. a8, queen, checkmate. So a fascinating game. Uh, and to answer the question, I guess maybe five pawns or six pawns in the end game aren't worth a rook, especially in this position anyway. But it was a very nice game from Leela. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you did, please do drop a like. If you didn't, please do drop a dislike and explain why. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.